okay guys you're welcome back to the next session okay in this session we are looking at um, trying to get the salary for the first person which is Agnes okay so we are going to use vein lookup again and then we look for Agnes salary so we do equals we type our vein lookup we can double click on this okay we are interested in this unique ID so select the staff ID you bring a comma we know we will find the um, salary and the basic information from the employee list so let's go and look for the employee okay so we go to employee list we select from here we hold down the control and shift key and then we press the down arrow keep press until it takes you to the end very good because we have defined this table you see that it brings the name okay so I bring comma then I ask myself where can I find my um, salary I can find it in column 3 this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 so let's just type column 3 and enter so you just type 3 and then you close your parentheses as simple as that so it brings us the salary for Agnes okay now when I scroll I don't get to see Agnes everything seems to be hidden so we can freeze it from here okay and then we'll be able to see the header and also to see the person in question so let's freeze now when we scroll you can see Agnes again when you scroll inside to it goes okay so we have our basic okay I need it to be here all right these are the important things that we need so far we can also decide to highlight from here to here and actually go to hide the option to hide so that we don't have to waste time on this okay but later we'll hide it for now let's just drag it in okay so we have our basic salary now we need to go and check the taxable allowances that we're giving for the local we have cost of living uniform and utility so quickly let's go to our case study and look for the allowances that we're giving to them okay so cost of living is 20 percent of basic salary uniform is two and utility is ten okay so let's go back to our payroll we can put it out and enter and bring your brackets let's type our 20 percent here so that we don't forget you uniform was two percent press your alt and enter open bracket two percent okay utility i think was 10 alt and enter so that it move on to the next level 10 percent okay quickly let's confirm if this percentages are correct okay so we have 22 and 10 excellent so now what are we going to do very simple cost of living allowance is just 20 percent of this so just say equals basic salary times 20 percent as simple as that this is two percent so the basic salary times two percent as simple as that we can expand this a bit expand this a bit this is ten percent so this times ten percent okay now you can see that in November there's nothing like bonus there's nothing like leave there's nothing like medical so highlight from here to here right click on it and go to hide we don't need that okay and so that takes us to overtime it means we need to go and talk about overtime so quickly let's go to the class board okay the whiteboard 
and talk briefly about overtime treatment and then we can come back and continue uh, inconvenience family these two are for experts and this is local so let's hide it we don't need it very good okay so we are here we will be able to get a figure here if we have finished with our overtime but before we go to overtime sheet and work on overtime I need us to understand the principle regarding overtime so let's go quickly and check this information <coughs> sorry so now let's see overtime treatment so overtime is given to a junior staff employee now who is classified as an overtime overtime sorry who is classified as a junior employee overtime is only given to junior staff member and who is actually classified as a junior staff if your annual salary okay or what you are getting from the company is 18,000 your annual salary is 18,000 annual means 12 months then you are classified as a junior staff so if you work extra hours you will be paid an overtime For on the monthly basis if your monthly salary is within 1500 you are classified as a junior employee okay these are the people who are entitled to overtime now what happens to an officer whose salary is let's say 2000 per month and has work and an extra hour what benefit is he going to get is it overtime or not that one will not be overtime even though he will be paid an allowance we cannot classify it as an overtime it will be an allowance okay other allowance okay but when we talk of overtime it has to do with junior employees and their annual salary has to be up to 18,000 or on a monthly basis it has to be 1,500 meaning if you are getting a salary monthly salary of 1,000 you are a junior staff if you are getting 800 you are a junior staff if you are getting um, 1,499 you are a junior staff if you are getting 1,005 you are a junior staff if you get 1,005 and 1 you are not if you get 1,005 and 20 you are not that's what it means now once that is established it is on that basis that we are going to determine your overtime tax and so on now if the person getting the overtime is classified as a junior staff then this is the principle okay the principle is saying that find out whether the overtime that we have paid to the person is up to 50 percent of a salary okay if that is so you are going to charge a final tax of what five percent if that is not true but the overtime you've paid to the person is in excess of 50 percent then you first of all charge the first 50 percent five percent tax then the excess of the 50 percent you charge a tax of 10 percent okay so we'll go to the whiteboard and exhibit this shortly and see um my whiteboard is not showing so let's move on and see maybe i'll use excel for that simple calculation the overtime the person is getting okay if the overtime is equal to 50 percent of a salary then we will charge a tax of five percent so assuming you you express the overtime as a percentage of the salary and then you get 40 percent it means it's within 50 percent so you charge five percent of the overtime given to him or her as tax and you will only pay the overtime after deducting the tax this overtime tax this five percent is final so you deduct whatever is left you give it to the employee however 
if there is excess, it means over time paid to the person is more than the 50 percent then the first 50 percent will be taxed at five percent then the excess of the 50 percent will be taxed at 10 percent so let's quickly look at this illustration now uh, if you look at derek is a junior staff member of abc okay his monthly um basic salary is thousand he was paid an overtime for monthly for month of may Okay, this was over time that Derek was paid. Compute the tax for the tax to be held by ABC. Okay, so what do we do? First of all, express this over time as a percentage of this um, salary. So let's look at what they did. 450 over 1000 times 100. Okay, this will give us 45%. This 45% means it is within 50 percent so it is here okay so the overtime constitute just 45 percent so what happens we will just charge a tax of what five percent okay and what happened you take the overtime here and then you multiply by five percent which is 22.50 or 50 pesos 22 cities 50 percent this will be the tax and you have to deduct this 22 from the 480 sorry the 450 to get the net over time okay so that that's the first illustration let's look at a situation where the overtime exceeds 50 percent what will happen now patricia is a junior staff employee so we are on illustration two okay and of abc her monthly basic salary is thousand she was paid an overtime for the month of what may and this is, was the overtime okay so we are supposed to compute the tax to be withheld now we first of all have to express this as a percentage of the basic salary so 460 as a percentage of thousand obviously will give us 65 okay now you know that this is in excess of the 50 percent that they are talking about here so what happens we we'll first of all look for 50 percent of the basic salary then we'll tax at what five percent after that the excess of this 50 percent will tax at 10 percent so let's quickly look at how it was done so first of all we express it as a percentage we get our 65 and then because this is in essence of our 50 percent what happens we will have to first of all look for the first 50 percent of the salary so 50 percent of the salary is 500 so what it means is that the overtime which is 650 the first 500 of this overtime will have to be taxed at a rate of five percent so we take our 500 times five and it gives us 25 now the overtime you have actually taken the first 500 from it so you are only left with 150 okay this 150 is the excess they are talking about over here this excess and what is the rate the rate is 10 percent so the 150 that is left okay we will be it will be taxed at what 10 percent which is what 15. so what will be the total tax to be withheld it will be this 15 plus this 25 giving us a total tax of 40 we will then less this 40 from the total um, over time and the excess which is 16 is what we will pay to um, the person okay so this is how the overtime treatment works okay now you have to understand that if the person is not a junior staff, the annual salary is not 18,000 or the monthly salary is not um, is not 1,005. That means it is more than 1,005. Then that person will not qualify for an overtime. So this 5% tax, 10% tax will not be applicable okay 
assuming this first illustration okay Derek's salary was 3,000 per month right away you know Derek is not entitled to overtime so even though they have paid Derek overtime this overtime will not be classified as overtime under this treatment 5% and 10 all this overtime that was paid to Derek would have been added as part of his taxable allowance that's why if you go to payroll you see something like overtime not 5% or 10%. So here they are referring to an overtime, okay, extra hours that has been worked by an officer who is not entitled to overtime. So here we'll just change it to other allowance. But you know that this is representing an overtime given to someone who is not um, a junior staff. So let me change this to other allowance. okay for extra hours so this is to distinguish between the overtime which is paid to junior employees and then overtime given to employees who are not junior employees who are senior officers and due to some reason they needed to stay behind and do extra work okay all right so now i want us to continue with our um over time so let's go to our over time so this is our over time okay so we are going to look for the standard hours that was worked by each of these employees then standard hours as per the days in the in the month is 21 days by the eight hours however the attendance of each of these employees will help us know the actual hours that they've worked okay however with regard to drivers they had special cases because uh, even though they may have come to work for 21 days, they may have driven for more than 8 hours. So they may get extra hours. Okay. So for them, the question gives us specific hours worked. So we can go back to the question. And then we look at... Uh, we fish for overtime. We try to look for overtime first of all. Um, okay, I think this is not giving me what I want. Let me use drivers. Okay, so this is the hours that was worked in November. So we will use this hours as the actual hours work for these drivers. Apart from them, the other employees will use the attendance multiplied by the number of hours that you expected to work in a day okay so let's start with agnes how do we get the standard hours we just pick the 21 days here we want it to be constant so that when we drag down it will be the same so you press f4 then you multiply it by the eight hours we still want it to be constant because eight hours will be eight hours for everybody so we enter so this is the standard hours that we should have worked or everybody is expected to work for the month that we are paying our salary which is november the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually link this cell uh, to the attendance to get the actual attendance for agonists once we get the actual attendance of Agnes, then we can multiply by the hours that she was supposed to work each day. So, equals, we do a VIN lookup. <coughs> Sorry. By this time around, we pick the ID. We are interested in attendance. Okay. <coughs> then, we pick it from here. Always remember to pick from the first person on the list up to the end. The last 
uh, column is 41 where the total is so let's keep the 41 in mind press your control and shift down and then press the down arrow till it takes you to the end of the table because we should not label this table or define this table it's not giving us a specific name so press F4 to make this table constant after that bring your comma and you know you'll find the information you need in column 41 so type 41 and close your brackets so you see it gives us the attendance the actual attendance for agonists but we are not only interested in attendance we are interested in the hours so now that we know the actual days the number of days that agnes went to work all things being equal she was supposed to work eight hours each day so what would be the total hours work for agnes it would be this 21 times the eight hours so let's edit this formula just double click and then move to the back of your bracket and just multiply by eight hours why eight hours eight hours because each working day you are supposed to work from eight to five which is eight hours so enter so look at it because agnes was present for um 21 days and she was expected to work for eight hours you see that the hours worked and the um standard hours happens to be the same okay that is with the case of agnes but if we drag down, you see that it will change because not all of them were present. For example, if I drag this down, it will not change because this is the same for everybody in the company. But the actual hours work is what to change. So you can see this has changed. This also has changed because of their attendance. Okay, so let's undo and continue. Always do the first person. Once you get the first person correct, you just drag down. And every, everything will be correct okay so now let's look at hours over time hours in this case now how are we going to get our overtime we are going to use an inbuilt function called if okay so if you bring your parenthesis or bracket this cell okay this hours that will work which is in e5 is greater okay than the standard hours then there is an overtime are you getting the logic if the hours i have worked is more than the hours i should have worked then there is overtime now if that is true okay excel is asking you if that is true what should be the logic what should be the answer what should be the value if that is true okay so if that is true what do you want excel to do i want excel to find the difference between this cell okay and this cell if that is not true so we bring comma if that is not true what do you want excel to do i want excel to return zero as the answer then we enter why is it zero? It is zero because there hasn't been any overtime. Why? This is 168. The standard hours is also 168. So there is no overtime. However, should you drag it down, you see that you get some overtime. Now, we are not getting any overtime here because this is less than this. So obviously no overtime. But if you drag it down further, you will come across some overtime in that order okay so let's undo and still keep it here all right the next thing we need to do for agnes is to bring agnes basic salary we know how to go about this vein lookup double click or click on your tab key select the serial number and we will find the salary in employee list by now you know that this sheet is labeled as staff so you can just type your stuff here when it appears down here double click to select bring your comma and you know salary is in column 3 so bring your 3 close your parenthesis and you see it brings the salary for Agnes 
Now the question is, hourly rate. If this is the salary, the basic salary for Agnes, and this is the standard hours for salary uh, for Agnes, or for every employee for this particular um, payroll period, what will be Agnes hourly rate every one hour? How much salary is Agnes paid? All you do is you pick the salary here and divide by the standard hours. So every one hour that Agnes works in that particular month, she was paid six CD thirty five pesos. Six CD thirty five pesos. Now the next thing we need to do is we we have our overtime hours here. Okay, we have our actual hours here that's for these hours now we need to know the overtime hours so that we can multiply the overtime hours and the overtime sorry the overtime rate sorry we need to get the overtime rate so that we can multiply by over overtime hours to get the overtime pay okay so how do we get the overtime rate let's go to the question and look at what they told us to do So now they told us all drivers were entitled to an overtime. And then they gave us how the payment will be done. If you recall, all drivers are paid an overtime of a time and half. Okay. For every extra hours that they work. Okay. Now let's see. So a time and half. What does it mean? Let's go to Excel and illustrate that. Now, if you work one hour or if Agnes works one hour, she is paid CCD 35 pesos. That is a time. If she decides to work an overtime, she will be paid this standard rate, which is the time, and then half of this, a time and a half. This is her standard rate so this is the time they are talking about then she will be giving additional half of this so let's see how it will be done i'll take this which is representing a time plus our open bracket i'll pick this again times 0 0.5 which is the same as 50 percent or 50 percent what have we done H5 is representing the rate for every one hour. So that is a time. H5 times 0 0.5 is the half they are talking about. So adding these two means, you are giving the person her one hour rate plus half of that one hour rate. Okay, so we enter and then we get this. So you see, if you work one extra hour, of this 168 hours okay you will be entitled to a rate of 9 CD 53 pesos that is what they mean by a time and a half I hope you guys are getting it the next thing that we do is overtime pay overtime pay you have your overtime hours here you have your overtime rate here. So how do you get to overtime pay? You just multiply this times this. And we get zero. Zero because this is zero hours. So you didn't work any overtime. So there's no way you get this money. Okay. So excellent. Now the next thing we have to talk about is the tax. If you recall from the example that we looked at, the overtime that is here, if it is up to 50% of this basic salary, then we are saying, then we are saying you are going to pay a tax of 5%. So we need to put a formula here that Excel will do the analysis and know, okay, if the amount in this cell is less than this, sorry, is equivalent to 50% then it will tax it at 5% if the amount here 
is more than 50%, then it will first of all calculate 5% of the 50% portion and then 10% of the excess. So you need to put a formula in this cell so that it will do that automatically for us. So let's start with our formula. We are using if. So if this cell, which is going to be the overtime pay, okay, is less or equals to 50% times our salary. Okay. Then what do you want? Let's clear that one. Bring comma. Then what do you want the outcome to be? So we, we are building it gradually. What do you want the outcome to be? You are saying that if the amount that we have here okay is less or equals to 50 percent of this then excel what should you do take this over time pay okay which is in j5 this cell this cell here take this and multiply it by what a tax of five percent that's the first logic so let's go over again Excel, look at this cell J5, which is representing the overtime I'm getting. If that overtime expressed as a percentage of this salary, okay, is less or equals to 50%, then just take this overtime pay and multiply by what? 5%. That's the first logic. Okay. What if this is not true? So you bring comma. If this is not true, what do you want Excel to do? You want Excel to first of all calculate the 5% on the first 50%. And then the excess Excel will calculate the 10%. So if this is not true, let's open bracket. Excel, what I want you to do is find 50% of this. I'm not done. Let's finish it. If that is not true, let's clear. 550% times the basic salary. Okay. Like this. And then multiply that by 5%. That is the first part. Let me bring another bracket here. The second part is you add this so plus open another bracket the overtime that we are paying is J5 so you can type J5 on your keyboard okay minus open bracket again the first 50 percent that you you have charged so 50 percent times the basic salary okay now if this is the case what will happen close your brackets multiply this by what 10 percent this is a bit involving but let's go over again so now if the overtime pay which is in j5 okay is less or equals to 50 percent of this salary excel just take the overtime figure multiply it by five percent tax as simple as that then this is the second option if this is not true it means that figure is greater than 50 percent so in that instance excel what is 50 percent of the basic salary whatever the answer is okay over here multiply by five percent add the answer to the ss which is multiplied by ten percent so the over time which is j5 minus the first fifty percent that we have charged tax of five percent which is this one when you subtract that one from it whatever answer we are getting 
multiply that by 10 percent okay so now you close your parenthesis and hit enter because there is nothing here that is why you are seeing zero but should we put something here let's say 50 you see that it calculates the overtime for us should we put 500 here it will calculate the overtime for us but because there is no overtime there that's why you are seeing it as an empty okay the last thing that we do under overtime is we have the tax we have the overtime pay so what do we do to get a net we just pick equals the overtime pay minus the overtime tax and then we enter once you've done this correctly all that you need to do is go down the first person double click and then it calculates it for us okay up to the end now there is nothing here so we don't want anything to be sitting here because we drag it down it's given so you can clear it like this or you can add another function called if error okay then it won't give us all these things but because this doesn't represent anyone here that's why it give us so we clear now the last thing i want us to talk about is if you look closely nobody has gotten in over time so far right so let's go to the question and look at the drivers they give us specific hours for the drivers so let's look for those specific information and then record the information after that you see that there will be some overtime for them okay so look at ben ben actually work for 174 instead of working for 168 then work for 174 here she work emmanuel work for 185 another person so you can see that this is the actual so for the drivers we need to go and alter how the the hours that was worked yes they all came to work 21 days they are supposed to work for eight hours but these drivers they drove more than the eight hours that's why their information here is unique so we need to go to our our payroll, um, payroll over time and for these people we need to enter these actual hours work and not based just based on the um, attendance for the others okay so let's see the first person on the list is Ben so control F to bring your dialog box your search box then look for Ben so Bernate is here what was the actual hours that was worked the actual hours is supposed to be 174 or so yes so we change this to 174 okay the next person on the list is Emmanuel 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 Akwesi Akwesi also worked 165 for him he worked less hours he came to work but he wasn't driving okay let's go to Imano Nyako okay Imano Nyako is down here so how many hours Imano Nyako is 185 okay so you can see that we are getting some overtime here and there okay the next person is eric in cancer eric too is down here so we are not moving anywhere we are just here 170 oh no 170 the next person is ernest eric eric is also down here eric is no Eric in cancer is rather 180. 180. And then Eric Ousu is 170. Okay, thank you.
then NST. NS is also down here. NS is supposed to be 163. NS also did not work for 168 hours. He was uh, uh, present all right, but was not working throughout. Okay. Then, Roger. Ahito Roger. I'm getting all this information from the case study so you can just refer and you see the exact hours that were worked by these drivers okay the next is amati fuel okay so we search for amati some okay he's also down here the actual hours that was working was one seven seven. Then we have Amakon Bernard, also a driver one eight one. Okay. Andre Quarton also one ninety. So very good. So excellent. So you can see that pair the formulas that we input we are getting the respective over time for each of them and this will be the net over time however if you recall we said that before someone will enjoy over time under this treatment five percent or ten percent tax treatment then that employee shouldn't be a junior employee so those who receive the overtime okay let's see whether they all qualify as junior employees this is less than thousand five so correct less than thousand five. but if you look at this person amwakon if you look at amwakon his salary here is actually more than thousand five hundred so even though he has been paid an overtime of um an overtime of 185 we are not going to tax him using this tax um, treatment because he does not qualify under this tax treatment so we will take all this overtime that was paid to him and add it to the other allowances for extra hours okay so please take note so look at it carefully his salary here is more than thousand five so he is a senior staff and not a junior so even though we've given him this over time we won't use this tax treatment for him so let's delete this side okay so we'll pick the whole overtime that was paid and add it to the taxable allowance now if you are not getting let's go back to local payroll let me show you something now if you go to local payroll you can see we have we have other allowances for extra hours this is where we are going to put it and we will not deduct any tax five percent or ten we'll bring everything here and it will form part of his um gross salary and it will be subjected to tax okay simply because he does not qualified as a junior employee okay so let's go back to the overtime sheet now each of them qualifies right because the question said they are all drivers but if you look here he qualified because it's within 1500 this is not that's why we have cancelled this is within okay who else had overtime 1002 is within so we allow this is also within this is within this is within so very good so now that we've built we've built our overtime let's take note the total overtime that's after we've deducted the tax the net is in 11 column 11 then the actual overtime paid is in column 9 now let's go back to our payroll and then we continue so we'll end this session here 
and now that we understand this we'll come to the next session and link the other allowances which is coming from the overtime okay because they are not junior staff we'll link it and continue from here okay once again thank you for your time and i know this session has been a bit uh, lengthy I, I hope you get the whole thing okay thank you